Welcome to this series of hands-on tutorials from the SAP HANA Academy. I'm Philip Muggleston. In this series, we're covering SAP Graph. In this video tutorial, we're going to look at how we can get started to build client applications using the business technology platform Kima Runtime. So you can see I'm here in the cockpit. If we scroll down to look at our services, instances, and subscriptions, in terms of environments, we've not got any enabled. Now, previously, we've seen how to enable the Cloud Foundry environment and then create client apps that work with SCP Graph from there. What we'll do now is actually set that up for Kima instead. So the first thing we'll need to do is go to the overall global account and check the entitlements and the service assignments. And we need to check that we've got the Kima runtime as an available service. Now, assuming that's the case, then we can go to the sub account. In this case, I'm going to use the sub account where we've actually got our graph instance. And I'm going to go to the entitlements, choose configure, add service plans, and then I'm going to add the Kima runtime, in this case using the AWS. So we're going to add that service plan. And we'll need to save. Now, once we've done that, we can enable the Kima runtime. We can do that from the overview screen. If we go there and scroll down, we can see we've got a button here to enable Kima. So we just need to click on that. Now we'll get some options. We can give it a name. I'm going to call it uh, the same name as my sub account. Potentially, you can then fill in other options such as the region. So I'm going to be using EU10, the machine type that you want to use for it. I'll go with the smallest one for this example. And finally, you can hit create. And you'll see the cluster is currently being created. That's going to take a little while, maybe half an hour or more. So what we'll do in the meantime is we'll have a look at some of the prerequisites that you're going to need to be able to go through the process of developing and uh, deploying applications to the Kima environment. So the first thing is we're going to need somewhere that we we'll actually create our source code. And for that, what I'm going to do is use Visual Studio Code and allows me to open up a nice new terminal window. Now we're going to need a number of different things available on the command line. So for example, one of the things we'll need is Git. Now Git, if you're running on a Mac like I am here, then you can actually get that from the Xcode command line tools. So when you install those, you'll get Git and you'll get Make and things like that installed for you. We're also going to need to have Node.js. So I'm going to just test that I've got Node.js installed, check for the version of Node.js and also NPM, the Node Package Manager. There are various ways you can install that. You may have it already. Otherwise, you can use the Node Version Manager, NVM, or you can just install it directly from the Node.js website. We're also going to need the ability to build and push containers to Docker Hub. For that, really, there are many different options. One thing that you could do is go ahead and install Docker Desktop. So if we go to docker.com, this is where you can get Docker Desktop, for example. Be aware of the licensing because Docker Desktop is not for free for commercial use. What I'm going to do is use an alternative, which is called Podman. If you go to podman.io, you can find more detail about it. So I'm going to be using Podman in my example here. Now, if you want, you can completely avoid having the ability to actually build and push containers directly from your desktop if you use a CICD, a continuous integration and delivery scenario, and that could use a tool called Canico. But that's beyond the scope of this video tutorial. So we'll just go back to Visual Studio Code, and if we look, we can see that I've got Podman up and running. You are going to need a Docker Hub ID though. So for that, we can go back to our web browser and we can go to hub.docker.com. Make sure that you've actually set up an account. I'm already logged in here and we'll be creating repositories here. So you can see here, this is the, the name, basically my account name. That's something we're gonna to need to specify when we run the application. Now, in terms of the command line, we're also going to need to have the Kubernetes command line, the Kubernetes kubectl. So for that one, you can see I've got that installed. And as we're going to be using Kima version two, we're also going to need the kube login. That's actually something that you can get from Crew. So if you have a look at Crew, if you've installed that, it will allow you to install uh, Kubernetes uh, packages. And the one that we need to have in order to actually log into Kima is the one called oidc-login. So basically you'll need to run this kind of command to install it, but crew will need to be installed first before you can do that. Also, we're going to need make. Now it's not absolutely required, but we're gonna use that in our scenario. Make makes it easier for us to actually go ahead and do the process of building and uh, pushing a number of different containers in one go. Now also we're going to use Helm charts, which are standard in the uh, container world for how you actually package up applications. So for that one, 
can see you go to helm.sh this is where you can actually download and install the helm tool so let's just check that i've got it installed indeed we've got helm up and running so those are the prerequisites that we're going to need to have so that we can actually go ahead with this scenario now we're going to need to be logged into docker hub so that we can push our containers to it for that you would normally use docker login or in my case i'm using podman so i'm using the podmin login to docker.io so let me go ahead and authenticate now we're going to use the yeoman generator from the hana academy to actually scaffold out our application so we don't have to write everything from scratch so for that we're going to need to make sure we've got yeoman installed now yeoman is a node.js uh, module so we can install it in this way npm i for install dash g to store it globally and then yo for yeoman so that's looking good we've got yeoman installed and what we'll also then want to install is our generator and for that we can use npm install again global option and then it's generator dash subpanel academy dash mta and then we can just ensure yo command and we can see that our generator is available to use so let's go back now and see whether our Kima environment is ready to use so we can see that the Kima environment has now been created so we've got some links we've got a link to the dashboard and we've got a link to the cube config url so let's open the dashboard click access console so now we can see our Kima environment, we can see our server address, we're going to need this information later. We can see what namespaces we've got, etc. This is just a clean vanilla environment we've just created. So we need to make sure we can access this through the command line through kubectl. So to do that, what we can do is click on this link to download the kubeconfig URL. And we'll see we get a YAML file kubeconfig. So that's been downloaded to my downloads folder. So indeed we can see it there. Now what we need to do is to create an environment variable that will basically point to the file that we've downloaded. So let's go and use the export command. That's what you use on Mac or Linux. If you're working on Windows, you would use a slightly different command, for example, in PowerShell. And to avoid some messages about security, what we can do is also just change the rights of who can actually read this file. So now we've done that, we should be able to run version and you see it logs us in using that yaml file we just downloaded and we can see we get the information of the system we're connected to and what we can also do for example is get the namespaces so we can see we've got these default ones etc what we might want to do is create one now we can create one either on the command line or if we want we can also create one using the dashboard so let's create a namespace here interactively let's maybe call it dev hit create now we can see our namespace and if we run the command again now we can see that our dev namespace exists. So basically we're good to go. There's just one other thing to review before we actually get started. And that's just to go to some of the documentation. So you can go to help.sp.com forward slash graph. It's a nice shortcut to get there. And go to the developer guide and go to the getting started section. Because in here we've got a lot of really useful information about how we're going to deal with authentication and security. Uh, and this is something that you really need to be thinking of from the beginning when you're developing your project. We've covered this in other video tutorials. So we're going to have a user that logs in explicitly to our application, and then we're going to basically pass that user through uh, all the way into the backend systems via SAP Graph. So in this video tutorial, we've created the Kima environment in the BTP, and we've also checked the prerequisites so that we're ready to go.